Hello, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of Miracast, Wild Dreamer Productions' very own podcast, available for you to listen and get all your updates about theatre, about dance in Australia, in New Zealand, and all around the world. And I'm your host today. I am George, and I am joined by the one and only Paul Menes. Paul, hi. Hey, George. How's it going? I am blumming fantastic. How are you, my friend? Uh, about the same level, keeping it together, you know, busy life. Busy is busy. good. Absolutely. Always best to, to keep working, keep doing amazing things um, and, and staying busy in some of the most exciting spaces in the world. But yeah. for some people who might not know who you are or what you get up to for Miro and Wild Dreamer, give us a quick introduction. So I play the lead male character, Krishna, in Miro. And I'm basically going to be on stage the whole time um, as a living statue. And the role in the play is uh, Mira's uh, lover. It's the immortal god that the mortal Mira is in love with. And yeah, that's basically my role in it. And it's been really interesting. Yeah, it, it is, because I know that, obviously, compared to the show last year, we did have someone playing Krishna, but a lot of the time on that stage, we had just a, a statue that was making that representation. But this year, we have your beautiful face and your beautiful persona <laughs> that will be on stage instead. So how how originally did you get into Mira? How did this all start? Uh, so originally, I was just going to be the um, background photographer, videographer for the um the production and just helping them out with some marketing stuff but um on the third day of audition i think i think it was chumko or someone who uh mentioned to arti about like auditioning me to be krishna and so they got the idea in their heads and um got me to do a little audition and i was kind of resistant at first but uh, it took a bit of convincing and I decided to go for it. You know, it's something new, something different, something I'd never tried before. And I'm always um, into learning new things and trying new things and having new experiences. So I decided, you know, screw it. I'll, I'll take the plunge. And it's been, it's been great. That that's awesome. Um, and I know probably definitely a good idea because once um, Artie gets an idea in her head, it's um yeah, it's pretty hard to shake that off her. She is a a driving force, a train with no brakes that will not stop until yeah. she makes it what she believes. <laughs> um, but, but you you said a bit about how you were originally only coming into the production to do some photography, some videography, and things like that. I, I'm sensing these are passions that you also have as as well as performing. Yeah, so um, that's basically how I make my bread and butter. I'm a video slash photographer, photography producer, whatever you could call it. Um, I generally just describe myself as a digital artist because all, everything I do is basically mostly on the computer. Um, yeah, it's something I've been doing for the last three years that I kind of fell into. I was always into like arts and um, creative stuff and yeah from childhood basically and so this is kind of where I've landed up and you know I've gone through an entire process of my life of figuring out what I want to actually do with the stuff that's in my that's constantly flying around my head and so ended up landing in photography and videography as my main gig. And is there a particular style of photography that you just love above all else or is it just taking photos is that's all what I love doing? Uh, particular stuff, not really, like the, the stuff that I photograph the most is probably like stuff for like hospitality, and mm. so that's like a lot of like food and drinks and like people having fun and getting a bit silly, and I, I quite enjoy that. I, 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 if I'd say I have a style, it's sort of like really, like realistic, gritty style. I don't like stuff that's like highly edited or filtered or made to seem like, like fake. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like the um, the stuff that I find that's the best in my work is the stuff that some other people might see as like kind of like low quality or whatever. But yeah, I quite I I, I enjoy stuff that feels like grungy. I feel it, it's much more real. 
It is. Yeah. I've, I've, I've personally seen your Instagram, as I'm sure many people have, and it's so many of the photos on there are just, they're not anything crazy flash or or anything just so wild, but it's just almost this um, toned and like muted set of photos that are just almost like sum up, obviously, what you get up to in Auckland and, and the different things that you, you go around doing. Um, but they are, they're just very succinct, high quality, simple beautiful photos so it is Thanks. you have a, a great talent there but something Thanks. else that I did notice whilst having a look through your Instagram which I think you might have touched on was a lot of cocktail drinks as well now yeah. obviously this can only mean one of two things either raging alcoholism or you have a second talent that you haven't told us about do you oh, a bit of both. <laughs> what's what's going on there um I do like more than the occasional drink but also like i do a lot of stuff like bartenders and like uh, hospital stuff because that's something that's an industry that i've realized doesn't get enough credit or like enough um respect from people like the hospital industry is like one of the biggest in new zealand people don't really like give give them like the credit that they deserve like with how hard they work and how much time and effort like they put into uh their craft and so a lot of people who do photography and videography especially don't really go into the industry because there's not much money there but i decided to focus on it just because you know i like the people and i like the their passion and um what they what they do and yeah it's been great so far like um with uh, uh certain bartenders and stuff as well like you see they they know that they have like this creative side of them that they want to get out and they want people to see and it's it's great being able to help them do that as well because there aren't that many people clamoring to like just um take a few like photos for like pennies for buttons and like build up that connection with people and in that industry so yeah that's a big part of it as well yeah just making the connections with people of course and that's a, a big part of i guess you know making the most out of anything that's being done especially with our time at mirror and wild dreamer is it's all about just that connecting with people and and leveraging our different passions and skills to bring to life things that could be that are much cooler than what could be done on our on our own um yeah but that's so cool and it's so great that you have all these these different outlets and these different ways that you can embellish your passion um, and something else that I also came across um, or came across recently while I was having a bit of a look online was some articles that you have written. There is a, what I believe to be a New Zealand like male lifestyle magazine, M2, which I believe you might have written a couple of articles for, potentially even like travel uh, yeah. reviewing, which I know is yeah. like probably everybody's dream job. But how did you how did you get into that? Oh, that was, a, a, again, like a lot of the cool uh, yeah a lot of the cool shit I get to do is just like um by coincidence so a friend of mine who started working for M2 he's like hey we need a guy to like do photos and videos and stuff and so um in a month I was like sent on this cool trip to Hong Kong to see the Formula E races and um, document it and make a couple of videos take some photos and then they wanted me to write an article about it and it was like the first time I've ever written anything professionally and it ended up being um, pretty easy and ended up being pretty good and I quite enjoyed it so like I said I'm always trying to do new things and learn new things and I've always wanted to get into writing and I I kind of do that on my on my own but it was interesting like doing that for the first time doing it like in a professional scale for like a very specific goal and um, centering around like the trip to Hong Kong yeah yeah, so with all these different things that you've done, obviously like writing lots of photography and videography in tons of different capacities, are these skills that you all just that you just picked up along the way? Did you go to film school or how did that like original journey kind of pan out? How did it take you to what did it take for you to get to this point now? Uh, well, I've always been a bit I don't like without you know, sounding like I'm yeah tooting my own horn or whatever like I've always been like on more lean towards like the creative side of of things and it's always been like something that I've enjoyed doing like hey this thing that I did is now here in the world and it wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me or it's almost like a bit egotistic <laughs> but um yeah ever since I was little I enjoyed like drawing and doodling and so my mom sent me to like a few 
like art classes and I was in India and I really got into that. And then just before leaving India, my auntie came over from New York and dropped 200 comic books in my lap. And um, <laughs> so I went through that and started like copying out drawings of Superman and Spider-Man. And, and from that age, I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. And then, yeah, coming to New Zealand, I started like drawing more, started expressing myself creatively more because you can do that more in New Zealand than in, in India. Um, yeah, and throughout my like high school days and stuff, I kept on going like uh, with the art stuff. I did painting, design, um, not photography actually, which is <laughs> which is weird. But um, yeah, and I just kept going with the whole um, art path. Yeah, I was. I think I was the only Indian in my year to not do a science. <laughs> yeah, it was, and I studied animation and film at uni, and again, just just by chance. And um, it ended up being something I really enjoyed and being really good at. And then I just ended up doing photography and, and video just because the market demanded it and I was good at it and I enjoyed it. Yeah, very lucky that I kind of knew what I wanted to do from like a young age and it was something I enjoyed and was something that I, I'm good at. I realized like not, not a lot of people get that luxury. And I'm yeah. very grateful. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I, I do, I really believe that as any kind of artist in any kind of capacity, as much as, you know, egocentrism isn't a great thing to, to have it, I think that uh, at least a little bit of a sense of ego is, this is, is important as an artist. You need to know and oh, yeah. be self-aware of, of the great work that you're doing, the opportunities that you have, and, and the creative arts just facilitate and allow that, whether it is photography, whether it is anything that we've got up to along our, our journeys and paths. I know that it's literally one of the most satisfying things is being able to look back and look at some of the amazing work that I've done and and, and produced. Oh, and it is. It's what gives us that motivation to keep going and keep yeah. doing more. As, as you do need that, like, sign of, like that slight self sense of self-importance. Like, I heard um, Picasso, he never used to carry money. He used to carry around a sketch pad. So he'd, like, buy a coffee and then do a little doodle and then pay with that <laughs> and um it's like hey instead of five bucks you have a picasso and i i, I thought of myself i thought about myself i'm like you know i i kind of do that like sometimes i'll like a lot of artists do that as well it's like hey i'll do this for contra like i'll do um yeah like uh with the whole bot and the stuff it's like hey go like shop me some like drinks and i'll just come take some fancy photos of them and it's like hey like there's one little like not that i'm comparing myself to to picasso but it's like yeah you do need that kind of sense that you are worth something i guess yeah you are you are and everyone everyone is worth something everyone has skills and passions that they can use and leverage to make something amazing. That you're, like like your skill and your talent is worth something in the real world like something tangible hundred yeah. percent it's um, a yeah. lot of people see skills and talents as as just kind of subjective things or you either have it or you don't um but these are skills that can be grown and utilized and leveraged to um to make what you want what your biggest dreams come true um like i know yeah. we got to speak to ashani last um recently and she talked um spoke a bit about how when she grows up she wants to be a dancer which she every single day she she can't not dance because it just makes her feel sick. And those are the types of passions that we need to be pushing and, and finding a way to to create a living from, because there is a way to make a living from any passion, as you have shown your passion is digital art and you have made that work in so many different capacities. It's just about finding these opportunities to, to leverage our skills to make yeah. a living. And the thing is like, like you, like you mentioned with the Shani, like if she doesn't dance, she feels sick. Like sometimes like as like a creative person, like it's actually not f fun because like if you're not creating something, it actually does mess with your head and it does make you go like slightly crazy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, you take me away from my, my computer where I can't do some editing or do do something cool and I, I start getting the shakes. I start going weird and strange. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a line. But obviously leafing back in with Mira, because that is why we are here today and um, yeah. to learn about you and also to hear more about what's been going on with Mira and such. But you said that you hadn't done much theatre before. Is this your, your first theatre show? Have you done something else? Um, tell us a bit about your history in theatre. 
Uh, so history and theater is basically zero, apart from like a couple of primary school plays. Um, yeah, I did. Was it? Oh my, what did I do? I did drama in year twelve, but that was mostly like a blow off class. It was that was fun though. I learned like a. I learned a lot because it was very uh, loose. It was basically, have you, have you seen that show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yes. Yeah, so that was our drama class, basically. Our teacher would be like, hey, here's a scenario. Go do that. Get on, get on stage, do that, make it, make it entertaining. And that was fun. That brought out, like, a lot. That actually is what got me into sort of, like, thinking about, like, acting and drama and stuff as a, as a creator. Like, um, because it was, again, you're, like, you're kind of creating something from nothing. And I found that very interesting. Like the whole improv theater sort of thing. Um, but apart from that, no theater. Mostly like stuff in like short films. I, I was like in a couple of short films that we did at uni. Um, and then as like a bit of like side cash, I like did like background extra work in like commercials and TV shows like like Power Rangers and some like other little commercials or whatever. Yeah. And that's, yeah. So not too much experience and the world of like acting and theater but it's something that i've always been interested in and something that's always uh been at the back of my mind and thought i'd i thought i'd be good at so again learning new things doing new things i haven't come across anything like creative yet that i haven't like been at, at least decent at so <laughs> yeah are there any yeah. um obviously being in one of the biggest roles in this show now are there any um like things you've had to learn any skills you've had to pick up along the way or anything that's been kind of a bit more challenging part of the journey uh definitely the dancing um i've never been much of a dancer in like um like the very technical sense i know like everyone can like do some moves and stuff but like me following choreography and very specific um dance moves that's never been something i've done before and so i think that was the biggest challenge um, because it's some, it's like a different part of like my brain that I needed to access to make that um, work, I guess. Because my brain works very like um, technically and very like I, I like to know the steps. I like to know, you know, what's like each move, what it what it takes, how I'm gonna execute it, and so I get kind of hung up on that, and then um, kind of the i need the emotion to like flow out of that after i know the moves like you, you, you know what i mean like you get the technical yeah. stuff down you get hung up on the technical stuff is what i do yeah yeah, yeah. and whereas theater is all about showing that emotion which i am not that great at but some, that's something i've had to learn that's been the biggest challenge yeah i know that i sometimes get very um, i'm a lot more to get task oriented than i am to remember how i am you know facing the world and a lot of the time it is easy to get caught up in overthinking what I'm doing. Um, I know that you guys have a, a very innate and special skill to be able to not only think about everything that you're doing, but also perform and make it just that spectacle to watch on stage. It is really great. But how are your how are your confidence levels? Are you are you gonna be okay to stand on stage in front of hundreds of people? Have you done that before? Um I can't think of a point where I had to like really do I mean I have done stuff in front of audiences and actually that um launch um evening I was pretty I was kind of nervous about that but um yeah the, I, again I guess I just had to flick a switch in my brain where I was like okay it's not like these people are here to see me they're here to see a performance and all I gotta do is do that and everything will be fine and so oh. I guess like uh, the whole confidence thing comes from confidence in like the process and in what you're there to do and in what people's expectations are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, 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 it's weird thinking about how people get on stage and like try to hype themselves up and try to give themselves that extra uh, boost to go and do something but like 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 I said, like once I know what I have to do, once I have the technical stuff down, once everything I see stuff line lined up, the conference just follows because I'm like, okay, I know I know my shit, I know what I gotta do, let's do this. 
Absolutely. And whether that's in front of like whether that's in front of no one or like in front of like a thousand people, like it doesn't make a difference because it's just the only one in control in that situation is me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now you also mentioned the bit just briefly then about the launch event that recently took place in Auckland. Tell us a bit about that for people who might not have heard it. Uh, okay, so this was the um, Mira launch event. Um, it was like a big marketing press event at uh, AUT, and it was like a whole day of preparation, um, getting the uh, casting and the, the crew together to um, make this big presentation to a bunch of like um, – uh, people from the media and um, some so like some celebrities. The mayor was there. Um, yeah, basically showing um, a bunch of influencers like what Mira is about and um, getting the word out. And it was a really interesting uh, day in general. Like um, from start to finish, like seeing people, um, seeing well, seeing people who I hadn't seen like at uh, rehearsals and stuff. Who like because I do a lot of the acting rehearsals and then just like one-on-one -on -one dance rehearsals with Arti and so I don't get to see like the other dancers and like the other actors who do their own thing so this was the first time everyone kind of came together it was interesting seeing um it was the first time I got a sense of the scale of production actually which was really cool and um yeah seeing everyone progress throughout the day getting their costumes and makeup and stuff on and getting to see what the final product might actually look like and yeah knowing that what I'm part of now is actually something way bigger than me. I actually put a bit of pressure on me because, like, oh, I've actually like got to step up because this thing is actually uh, pretty significant, and there's a lot of people put a lot of um, work and effort into this. It's like, okay, I gotta step my game up, and I think that also had um, an impact on like the confidence levels and stuff. No, it, it, it really will. And as we just get closer and closer to the shows, these things are just going to start heightening even more. I know that it was genuinely one of the most memorable experiences of my 2018 last year was yeah. watching the Mirror journey and watching it evolve and then just putting together and piecing together this show. And then we had our costume rehearsal and everyone was in our, their costumes and it just became so much more real. And then we kept edging closer and closer, doing more of these different kind of events until the end show on show night. And it was absolutely mind blowing to just witness these hundreds of people that had been working endlessly. And you saw little snippets here and there, costumes and sets. But now it's all here on stage. And it is honestly one of the most marvelous sights to behold. And to not only have witnessed all the hard work from you guys that has gone in up until this point, but to see it all come together and just so magnificently, it's one of the best sights. And I can't wait, Paul, for you to be there on yeah. stage and, and performing as well. It's it's going to be one of your most memorable experiences, as will anyone who will be there to witness and watch uh, as no well. No doubt. Um, yeah. But we've seen... Um, We've obviously seen some pictures of you. We saw some videos of you at the launch event. And we've also seen some pictures of your Krishna counterparts like Sebastian and, and Heath and um, a lot of these other uh, casts, especially some of the guys from Auckland that will be performing as Krishna. Um, yeah. But one key or identifying part or unique part of Mira has to be that costume. It's It's what makes Krishna what he is. And obviously last year, it was a statue, but this year we have a person who is representing that figure. So tell everybody a bit about the costume that you'll be wearing, or more lack thereof, if such. <laughs> um, well, yeah, well, the costume I'm wearing is basically just... Um, I actually do not know the word for it. Um, the the blue puffy pants. I don't oh, kind of like a that. silken silk? Yeah, kind of like a... yeah. And you know the the, Chris, the Krishna's um, um, legend. I don't know what you call it, legendary like fe peacock feather in his in his cap. And I'm going to be painted, body painted gold and and blue. And uh, I think the idea was to get me looking as authentic as um, Krishna is described in the scriptures, which is sort of like a, go a goldish pale blue hue to him. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm going to be on, on stage, just the blue puppy pants, peacock feather, like a big heavy necklace and, yeah, just and shirtless the whole time. So, which is, that's why I've been hitting the gym quite hard. <laughs> 
I bet, yeah. I bet. But you will be there not only with your rock body, but shining in all your glory from the, the multiple different paints. And you have these oh, like yeah. uh, uh, crazy different patterns drawn on your chest. So they almost look drawn so delicately on your chest as well. Yeah, so it, it was a pretty interesting process, like watching the um, the makeup girls like um, do the the patterns and the makeup and and um, get me looking like I did. Um, yeah, it was like this cool like stencil they put on, and they showed me like their their inspiration and like again like as an artist, I was like I could like see their process. Like, oh yeah, you took a bit from here, you took a bit from there. You you got like your references images together and like to create something new, unique, which is pretty cool. That's yeah. so cool. It's a massive credit and a huge shout out to Sapphire Artistry and Mino Reedy. There are some of our makeup team in Auckland that are supporting us this year. They are doing an absolutely amazing job. Um, but how long does it take to get all the makeup up from start to finish? Uh, let's see. I think it took a, uh, at least a couple of hours because, you know, you got to get your first coat. It's like painting a house. Like you got to put the first coat on, then you dry and then second coat on, then you dry. Then you do like the detailing and and um, then you let that dry and then you do touch ups. And yeah, it's it. And then I, I can't really uh, sit down much for the, <laughs> for the rest <laughs> yeah, of the you day. Have to yeah. Stand the whole time. Hey. Yeah, but it's it was it was really cool because putting on the costume is kind of like putting on the character and like you feel different. Like um at that day in Tapac, like I was just walking around like in in my short shorts around like all these other people just and going about their own own thing, getting the makeup and costumes on. And um yeah, like um it was it was a, it was a great way to get like comfortable with myself and the character in that in that situation because it's like hey I've been walking around like a few hundred people today just like base on like half naked i can do this on stage <laughs> yeah maybe you just need to yeah. maybe we need to get you into character maybe like once a week where you can just go like do your grocery shopping um you just go like get some new clothes get some new shoes you know you just just live your week yeah. do your photography yeah. in the persona of krishna just get you mentally prepared you know <laughs> yeah let's go shopping and let's go to the mall and just in just my short shorts and that's it yeah no better way to build your confidence i, I think anyway. yeah um but paul i know that i absolutely cannot wait to see you on stage this and um, this may and june um should everybody be buying their tickets oh of course um they should uh head to the you can get them off the asb waterfront site or the there should be links on the uh, mirror the production uh, website as well um, and on the facebook page and uh yeah anything that people have posted about mirror as well they'll have a link to um, uh, where you can get the tickets and yeah grab your tickets as soon as you can and because the show is coming up quickly in end of may start of june so that's gonna be it's gonna be big and i i went to the theater and had a look as well and it's a pretty pretty nice theater yeah it looks it a, looks I'm, great yeah i've like filmed a couple of things there as well it's a really cool like venue Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see the theatre. I can't wait to see you. Um, I know all of my tickets are organised and sorted, but you're totally right. You can head to ASB's website. Um, you can head to Wild Dreamer Productions' website. You can literally just Google Mirror Auckland will come up. Book your tickets. Be there. See me and Paul and the entire cast full of passionate local creative professionals from Auckland working to bring this production to what it is. But Paul... Thank you so much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Same here. Um, and I know that I, along with everyone else, will be looking forward to seeing you perform on stage as the almighty Krishna. Yep, it's going to be an experience. <laughs> I bet it will. Now, Paul, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. And thank you, everybody else, for listening to. We'll talk to you all hey. later. Thanks, George.